Hello, I just wanted to do a quick review of what's going on in Africa. And a friend of mine, or a new friend maybe, uh, sent me a text message and then I was kind of thinking that, well, what have I studied with Africa? So I realized I haven't actually published a uh, project on it yet. Uh, so before anyone can do any kind of project on Africa, ironically, the funny thing is you have to kind of study the entire Earth and uh, in college, uh, I didn't study geography, but I've been studying kind of the entire Earth for the past year or so, um, and just looking at lots of different types of maps and demographics and kind of seeing. So uh, basically what you're looking at here, um, so to put this in context, uh, I started, obviously I'm from North America here, but I uh, wanted to study the entire Earth and looked into Europe, Asia, and uh, actually looked at uh, Antarctica as a main point of interest just because I was interested, looked like a brain to me and kind of seemed like a spiritual thing. Um, and I noticed there was this point that pointed down to, from Africa to uh, uh, Antarctica, I looked at the electromagnetic fields and a bunch of other factors and started to look at uh, how to make money, uh, I moved to New York City, and uh, in New York, they talk a lot about uh, global economics and uh, kind of what's going on. So I started looking at particularly uh, Latin America and Africa because there's the economies are so uh, different and uh, kind of growing at a have a potential of growing at a much faster rate than other areas. So, uh, and Africa is ginormous, so you can see kind of the relative size here of Africa and see, but a lot of it is uh, desert up here uh, in Saharan Africa. So, <coughs> uh, I thought I've done a study on Africa before, but basically, uh, the way a lot of people think about Africa is there's Africa as a whole, and then there's Sub-Saharan Africa, or Saharan Africa. So, the weird thing, um, when you start, first started to think about Africa, um, so I, I, I've basically been looking a lot at East Africa just because, as you can see here, it's got a lot of variety. It's also got these lakes um, and other things. So uh, what I'm going to do is turn on some of the demographics and you can kind of see what's going on overall. But uh, my main interest is kind of in East Africa. So this is the population density map. Um, and I changed the uh, opacity of it to make it look like this. So, and then I added here the uh, Earth at night imagery. So you can kind of see a subcategory of where the people are. So this is interesting because uh, now we can kind of scroll in and see uh, where the people are in Africa and also the city lights. You can kind of see too there. So it gives you kind of the subgroupings. So you can see there's kind of a bunch of, I mean, so in general, most of the people live here in West Africa, but there's certainly a lot of people also in it. Uh, I actually think like West Africa seems a little boring to me, but I shouldn't say some of these things. But, uh, but anyway, this is the region. So I have some friends in Uganda, and these are called the Great Lakes of Africa here. Um, and also a, one of my friends visited Tunisia up here, um, he really liked it. This is Mediterranean Africa. You can see there's just a lot of people in Egypt. A friend of mine is uh, part Egyptian, and she has some relatives from Egypt, and she's been wanting to go to Egypt. But this is a whole different area. But this is the Nile River kind of coming all the way to here and into uh, Uganda. That's where it basically starts, or some people say that there's a Blue Nile that heads up into here. So, But this gives you an idea for the people. So... Uh, just looking at this, um, you know, obviously I've looked at this many times before, but uh, some of the surprising things is actually this part going through the Congo, um, and even this internal Congo parts, um, maybe a little bit fearful. I have a friend, uh, a couple friends that I'm starting to make here in uh, Cameroon. The tallest mountain is actually, well, the tallest mountain, second tallest mountain is over here in this area. Uh, and they have a University of Bua, which is kind of a funny name, but... And then Nigeria, so uh, a lot of the stuff that a lot of people talk about is Nigeria, uh, but actually the part that I want to really focus on is actually kind of different even out to uh, Madagascar. You kind of look at the Great Lakes um, and then some of these coastal regions. So 
one of the reasons that I'm looking at this is also I'd like to try to sail possibly along the coast of Africa someday. Um, and it's interesting because maybe a lot of people might think of Mediterranean coastal sailing uh, for Africa, particularly out here in Morocco and uh, some other areas. But there is some sailing down in here. Um, and there is certainly some sailing in the inland areas here, but this is really hot because this is the equator basically runs right through here. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this whole project, but um, and then there's almost the Middle Eastern side of Africa here sailing around here. And I heard there's a lot of sharks actually off the coast of Somalia. Not a whole lot of people out this way, um, but Cape Town is super pretty and it's down here. So it's hard to say like what would be interesting. Uh, Madagascar. And the seas, from what I understand, get pretty dangerous when you sail across uh, the Indian Ocean. So there's a lot of stuff to think about um, in terms of understanding Africa. But uh, but I would say this area looks pretty interesting to me. So uh, I would say I was really surprised in Nigeria because a lot of it is changing into suburban Africa, um, their own kind of version of it. Um, but uh, and then there's also some interesting stuff going on, even on the tip here uh, in Dakar. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, basically that's that. So I'm going to turn this off and show you the climate. Uh, this might take a little bit to load up. Uh, so and we're going to load up the plate boundaries as well. And actually I'm going to turn off the climate so you can see. So this is kind of interesting to look at the plate. So Again, you see this this plate line runs right through here and then kind of suddenly stops mysteriously right here. So I'm not sure why that is. Um, but someone's passing by or something. But, uh, but anyway, so this uh, is super mysterious and it runs through these Great Lakes. And I would say this is perhaps along this area, like in California, you know, the... the Barrier has a fault line there as well. Um, uh, so I went ahead and added some of these earthquakes uh, here. This is the last few years of earthquakes in Africa. And there's actually surprisingly not a whole lot. Um, you see that up here uh, in Europe, they got a lot of activity with the earthquakes. Um, and then along the fault line here, there is some quite a number of earthquakes. Uh, but basically, it's right along these Great Lakes and not even so much in Uganda, um, which is interesting. So I, I've been kind of thinking about uh, where the future is in terms of these earthquakes because uh, you know California gets a lot of earthquakes, Greece gets a lot of Italy, um, and even in parts of Asia. So these seem to be pretty interesting if you believe the Earth's alive and some other things like that. So I'll turn off these earthquakes and we can see the fault lines. Now I'm gonna change this. I'll leave it on, it might be a little bit annoying, but you can see when you bring this uh, climate map on, it takes a little bit to load, unfortunately. Um, but you can kind of see if I change the opacity of this, you can kind of see it shows it very interesting and actually we need to take off the plate boundary so you can see. So this is a about like Florida climate right in this red zone and then the super red zone is jungle right so um, you can kind of see essentially what's going on here now these lighter green areas is like basically like California type of climate and then the desert is the desert so if I change this up a little bit more you can kind of see that boundary and um, so I'll just zoom out so this compared to Europe, you can kind of see. So basically, this is like California, you know, Spain, coast of Italy, and so on. Um, and then you get sub up into the Arctic, and then extremely cold there. Um, so and then Madagascar being kind of uh, strange here. So one of the strange things about Madagascar is it's kind of got this super dry area, and then also really wet along here. So you can see that the rain kind of stops here. And even this is a consequence to some extent of Madagascar the mountain range. Um, so, uh, but the wind and all that. So you can kind of see there's this little sliver here and then kind of a different area in here. 
um, and I would say it gets pretty hot. So, uh, but these are nicer areas because it's kind of green and you get uh, some higher altitude uh, and nice spots. So this would certainly be worthwhile looking into if you can't stand the super hot areas of Africa. There is actually even some spots in here up in the mountain range. And that's because the fault line runs through here. And if the fault line runs through here, mountains are being built up. And you can see some little weird red spots even on this, which would be interesting to investigate. But Kampala being quite hot and even jungly, um, which is actually surprising to me. But uh, And you can see some little red spots here. And uh, some other, this might be because of the mountain range and then there's some clouds and some other things. So you might find this map pretty interesting. I've been looking at this globally. This is the lightning flash rate map. And one of the first reasons I was interested in possibly visiting Africa was to kind of experience some lightning. I heard a famous missionary flew across here, almost died in his airplane because he got hit by lightning, um, or was just terrified because of the weather. Um, but I would say it's maybe there's a lake in here called Lake Kivu, and it's kind of right on the edge, and it may be possible to find some bearable climate fairly close to the uh, lightning. I was just kind of made up a term for it called lightning lake. But you can basically see here kind of the patterns and uh, super awesome map to get a hold of. Uh, if you want, I can try to give you some access to these. Or you just look up light annual lightning flash rate KMZ map or something and you can find it. Um, now, this is a little bit of a funny deal, right? So these are the climate maps. And what I did is I change them so that the opacity you can kind of see annual temperatures so if you change these around a little bit you can see certain areas so you can see right so if you compare this is like colder areas Africa's average temperature basically this is kind of slow because it's uh, quite a lot of data but you kind of see where it's cooler and where it's hotter. Um, so there's maybe some little spots in here where you can find some uh, bearable climate or even along this coast here looks actually quite good. So I haven't even noticed that before. Um, and if you compare that to North America, uh, you basically, it's a lot cooler in North America than in Africa. Um, so you can see this is a lot of purple zones. I live up here in the Pacific Northwest, so it's much cooler, and actually sometimes it's way too hot for even me here. So I would say be careful. Um, actually, now that I'm seeing this, trying to figure out what the climate is. So, uh, so actually, it might be a little bit different than what I thought, but in general, uh, these areas are even hotter. So I take back what I was saying. So average temperature being extremely hot and it's actually well anyway we gotta we gotta probably look at the climate map to really study that but I'll turn this off so you can kind of see there's the overall view so we're gonna get into some other details but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and publish this video with just the uh, uh, Google Earth kind of overviews uh, but uh, let me know what you think of this thanks